Every Steam input video I've made has culminated up to this point. This is probably the most difficult part of Steam input. Actimeters. What are they? How do they work? And what can I do with them? These are all questions that we will be answering today. You probably won't interact with activators unless you want the most esoteric controls on your Steam Deck. But without further ado, I present activators. If you like my content, please like, subscribe, share with your friends, and join my Discord server. So what the heck is an activator? An activator essentially is a method of activating your actions on a single button. Things such as pressing a button, double pressing, holding it, etc, etc. It's a control scheme that I barely use myself, truth be told. Not because I don't know how to use it, but because I don't know where to use it. So without further ado, let's begin. There are multiple different options for your activators, and you can select multiple activators on a single button. So as you can see here, there's a regular press, which is default. Double press activators only activate when you press the button twice in a row. Long press activates when you've held the button down for a period of time. You hold it down and then it'll activate. Start press activates when the button is pressed. It doesn't register holds or anything like that afterwards. Release Press activates when you release a button. Corded Press activates only when you're holding a prerequisite button first. There are also some other settings. Toggle turns the activator into a toggle. In this case, the toggle is set to hold the mouse button when it's turned on. As you can see here, I'm continually firing into this wall. Interruptible makes this activator interruptible by a different activator. In this case, my regular left mouse press would be interrupted when I double press. Fire start delay waits for a certain period of time before activating. In this example, I've cranked the delay up to maximum. It takes about 2 or 3 seconds to start. Fire end delay is the same concept in reverse. It delays when to stop. It takes about 2 to 3 seconds for the game to register that it stopped being pressed. Haptic intensity is for your haptic feedback. Cycle binding makes it so that your multi-button presses don't actually activate all at once, but rather, it cycles between each button every time you press it. In this example, I have my binding set to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, but because of this option, it's not going to press all 6 at the same time. But rather, every time I press a button, it goes from 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Hold to repeat turbo essentially turns your button into a turbo button as you hold it down. Now when I hold on the button, it cycles between all of them extremely quickly. In another example, you could have it rapid press a single button if you just hold it down. You can also set multiple activators on a single button. On my Y button, I have both a regular press and a double press bind on it. And they both do different things. The regular press is just a regular press, and double press toggles it on and off. You could also do a start press and release press binding. Start press presses left mouse button, release press presses the right mouse button. All of this is very cool, but at times I struggled to figure out where I can put these in my controls. But then I figured out that these, these activators, were the crux of my entire nested menu in a menu system. Essentially every radial menu item needed a release press, and the release press would remove the action layer, sending the player back a menu. Worth mentioning is that majority of the activators do work in touch menus as well as radial menus. For example, start and release press works. I start the press and then I release it to do a different action. Of course, not all control methods can make use of all activators. For example, the hotbar menu doesn't seem to work that well with any of them but the regular press. Most of Steam Input's power, I believe, comes from these activators. Like with everything else, 
Activators are simple in concept, but difficult to master in grasp and combine with everything. There are plenty of Steam input masters that know the craft better than I do. Creators such as Rumbletan, Woodsy, and a bunch of other Steam controller players on YouTube. They make a ton of great content and they teach you how to do I'll admit, I'm not a very creative person, but plenty of other people are. Depending on the gaming controller, you can find control bindings. You can import them and apply them to your own controllers as well. Yes, even on your Steam Deck. We'll talk about that next episode.